Hello everyone! Now it's the time for humoral immunity. And the maestro here are the B lymphocytes who produce immunoglobulins or antibodies. And in this video, we will discuss the B lymphocytes and the structure and functions of immunoglobulins. In the next video, we will illustrate the complement system whose function is to complete the action of antibodies. And let's start with the life story of a B lymphocyte. Bone marrow produce baby immature B lymphocytes. Their surfaces carry B cell, B cell receptors, which are all now immunoglobulin M. MHC class 2 molecules, as they are one of the antigen presenting cells, and the CD40 molecules. They complete their maturation in bone marrow and they become mature B lymphocytes, carrying immunoglobulin D as receptors on their surfaces. However, they are still naive. One day, a circulating B cell, while passing in a lymph node, meet an antigen, which it can recognize by its receptors. And thus, activation process of this B cell started. The first signal for activation was the attachment between the antigen and the immunoglobulin D, which is B cell receptor. The B cell internalizes the antigen and show it on its surface attached to MHC class 2 molecule and present it to a specific T helper 2 cell. T helper 2 cell attaches to the antigen. Then the CD40 molecule on the surface of B lymphocytes binds to the CD40 ligand on the surface of the T helper 2 cell. So the T helper 2 cell secretes uh, interleukin 4, interleukin 5, interleukin 6 and interleukin 10 which you deliver the second signal in B cell activation. B lymphocyte now becomes activated to be a lymphoblast that proliferate to form a clone of identical cells with the same specificity. B lymphocyte is then transformed into a plasma cell capable of producing all types of immunoglobulins and the memory cells for the same antigen were produced. All those events occurred in response to T helper 2 cell activation. So, this antigen is called T dependent antigen. There are some independent antigens that attach to B lymphocytes and don't need help from the T helper 2 cells. Those are called the T independent antigens, and their response is only immunoglobulin M, no class switching, and no memory cells. Now, who are immunoglobulins? They are the products of B lymphocytes, they are glycoproteins that circulate in blood and body fluids, and they are very specific, produced in response to a certain antigen and react only with it. Each immunoglobulin is formed of four polypeptide chains. Two heavy chains, each one is formed of three constant parts and one variable part, and the two light chains, each one is formed of one constant part and one variable part. A light chain is formed of 200 amino acids, about 25 kilodalton, and light chains in an immunoglobulin are all either kappa or lambda. A heavy chain is formed of 400 amino acids, about 50 to 75 kilodalton. Immunoglobulin G contains gamma heavy chains, immunoglobulin A contains alpha heavy chains, immunoglobulin M contains mau heavy chains, immunoglobulin D contains delta heavy chains, and immunoglobulin E contains epsilon heavy chains. This green portion is called the hinge region, where the two heavy chains are attached to each other by disulfide bonds. The NH2 terminal part, which is formed of the variable portions of both the light and the heavy chains, is called the paratope. And it is the site of attachment to the epitope of an antigen. Each immunoglobulin has two paratopes and can attach it to two epitopes, but of course identical epitopes. The carboxyl terminal differ among different classes of immunoglobulins and determine the functions of them. If we hydrolyze the immunoglobulin, we will have two fab portions or fragment of antigen binding site and one FC portion fragment crystallizable. This portion the FC portion attaches to many cells, immune cells, that have FC receptors. 
We have five classes of immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulin G, 75% of circulating immunoglobulins. There are four subclasses of immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin G1, 2, 3, and 4. Immunoglobulin M is a pentamer, constituting 8 to 10% of circulating immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulin M is responsible of primary immune response, while immunoglobulin G is responsible of secondary immune response. Immunoglobulin M acts as P cell receptor and is the only immunoglobulin produced in response to T-independent antigens. Also, it is responsible of ABO blood group incompatibility. While NTRH antibodies are immunoglobulin G, also, immunoglobulin G is the only immunoglobulin that can cross the placenta, as the placenta has FC receptors for immunoglobulin G. The next class is immunoglobulin A, that has two forms. A monomer, forming about 15% of circulating immunoglobulins, and a dimer, responsible of mucosal immunity, secreted by plasma cells in the submucosa of GIT or respiratory tract mucosa. Immunoglobulin E is a monomer present in serum in trace amounts. It is responsible of activating basophils and causing type 1 hypersensitivity reaction and activating xenophils against helminthes. Lastly, we have immunoglobulin D, whose main function is acting as B cell receptor and present in low amounts in serum. Functions of immunoglobulins include First, neutralization of organisms by attaching to them and prevent their attachment to cells. Immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin A can do that. Opsonization, binding to a pathogen and attachment by the other side to FC receptor on the surface of a phagocyte, helping phagocytosis. This is immunoglobulin G function. Agglutination of pathogens, which is the function of immunoglobulin M. Complement system activation, immunoglobulin G or immunoglobulin M attached to a pathogen and then bind to complement factor 1 activating complement cascade. Lastly, antibody dependent cell mediated cell cytotoxicity. IgG can do that. It binds to an abnormal cell and becomes attached to FC receptor to natural killer cell facilitating cell killing. What is class switching? Class switching is a switching from IgM production to production of different antibodies according to situation. And this is done under control of cytokines. Bacteria, for example, stimulates production of interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-6. And those cytokines elicit class switching to immunoglobulin G. Worms stimulates mainly in interleukin-4 and under this stimulation B cell produces immunoglobulin E. Transforming growth factor beta and interleukin-5 in mucosa stimulates production of immunoglobulin A. Now, let's see what happens once a pathogen enters our body. First, immunoglobulin M are produced, reach a peak, then decline. A long time passes since the organism enters the body till the immunoglobulin M is produced, about 10 days, and this is the time for differentiation, proliferation, and activation. Immunoglobulin M antibodies last in blood for short duration, and their concentration is low, and this is called the primary immune response. What happens if this organism visits our body for a second time? A secondary immune response develops. Within short duration, just hours, high concentrations of immunoglobulin G antibodies develop. This is due to the presence of memory B cells that were developed in the previous exposure. Immunoglobulin G immunoglobulins persist in blood for long time, months, years, and sometimes for lifelong. Before we come to end, what are heterophile antibodies? The antibodies that cross-react with antigens different than their specific antigens, and this has occurred due to sharing similar epitopes. What are monoclonal antibodies? 
monoclonal antibodies are clone of antibodies synthesized in labs against certain specific antigen to be used in diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. Thank you for watching us. Wait for the complement system video and goodbye.